Слово велосипеда прочели в Верхнем Гунду, Господа Амбассадор, Мир Шубин, шеф делегации Люди Европейной Республики Молдова. Thank you very much, Minister, Prime Minister, Ministers, dear members of Parliament, dear colleagues, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it was when I was asked to attend today's panel, I it was with big pleasure that I accepted because I think it is a very valuable event that has been organized with a lot of care and a lot of efforts. And I would like to congratulate the government on having organized this ICT summit here over the last uh, few days. And my particular thanks goes to Stella Mokhan, who I see over there, for having put all her efforts, her heart, into that exercise, which is of utmost importance. Um, just this week, uh, my two bosses in Brussels, if I may say so, the High Representative and Vice President Ashton and Commissioner Fuller, have passed a joint communication on delivering on a new European neighborhood policy. Um, we have also, among this package, we have also presented a new uh, progress report on the Republic of Moldova in the of this European uh, neighborhood policy. And I can uh, tell you that Information Society plays a, a vital role in this, in this report. Why? Because it is an, an important area. The Information Society policy within the European neighborhood policy aims at securing a fair, modern, open and transparent market for telecommunications an open and vibrant use of the internet for all and a diverse media environment. <coughs> Ensuring the security, stability and resilience of the internet and other electronic communication technologies is a fundamental building block for democracy and for the creation of a dynamic and innovative business climate. In order to exploit fully the growth and productivity potential of the information society, the European Commission will support further regulatory reforms including through regulators' networks. The Mediterranean regulators' network will be strengthened and an Eastern network will be established. The European Commission will also support the enhancement of the electronic communications environment in areas ranging from network interconnection to e-health. Equally, it will improve the high-speed connectivity of the regional infrastructures for research and for education. The active and democratic use of ICT and Internet, as well as steps towards a transparent and efficient audiovisual and media regulatory environment, will also be promoted. So we can see that uh, even in our new European neighborhood policy, this policy is by, by no means left aside. On the contrary, it plays a very prominent role. Ladies and gentlemen, a digital Moldova means <coughs> digital citizens a digital government, and a digital economy. In today's fast-changing and extremely interconnected world, governments face complex challenges. How to keep up with the change? How to address the needs of its very diverse citizens? How to respond to any new demands? How to equip its citizens and businesses with the relevant skills, with the knowledge and the know-how to, serve, uh, to survive and to be successful in this digital and globalized world, and how to help its business grow to become and to stay competitive. The quality of the governments, their capacity to grasp the opportunities of the global and digital world, and to create their development opportunities for their citizens and businesses are crucial. Governments have no choice but to consume and to use modern information technologies go and stay digital to respond to all these challenges and priorities. These are priorities not only on the use and in our member states' agendas, but as I have already said earlier, of our neighborhood policy as well. I would therefore like to welcome the e-government agenda launched by the government as part of the public administration reform. By harnessing the power of information technologies, the government of Moldova can advance faster in the implementation of reforms in ensuring good governance and in decreasing the level of corruption and in doing its homework as part of the DCFTA and Association Agreement negotiations. The government's strategy to put online all its public services by 2020 is crucial for unlocking development opportunities in the country, fighting with the inefficiency in the government and to overcome old Soviet structures and habits of administration. 
the opening of the government citizens portal on the 10th of May 2012 as the one point of access by citizens and business of public services is in line with the EU's e-government strategy. The EU has 12 such mandatory e-services and it will improve the quality of public service delivery and impact on the life and quality on the quality of the life of the citizens. I like always to give the example of Estonia, who is uh, has paid or who has played over the last 10 years kind of an example exemplary role. I'm very glad to hear that uh, Estonia is uh, in contact or Estonian authorities are in contact with the Moldovan authorities. And why not make Moldova the second Estonia in this in this context? I would be very pleased to help in this process. Implementation of e-procurement, e-health, e-school, e-custom, e-taxes, e-licensing, e-construction permits, e-certificates and e-authorizations are key services that could unleash the development of businesses in Moldova and could improve the management of public finance as well. I would also like to welcome the joining by the Moldovan government of the Open, Open Government Partnership and its commitment to implement the Open Government in Moldova by implementing specific commitments to increase public integrity, to manage efficiently public finance, and to improve public service delivery through the massive use of modern information technologies, as is outlined in the Open Government Action Plan, which was approved on the 4th of April this year. The government's decision to open, the, to open up the government data is in line with the EU Open Data Strategy announced on the, 7th of February, on the 12th of February 2011. Opening up the government data is to open up the government and increase the government's transparency, but also create opportunities for business development and job creation. In the EU, the open data, data has the potential of creating value to the amount of 200 billion euros. To conclude, I would like to welcome the intention of the government to develop the Digital Moldova 2020, which will be in synergy with the EU Digital Europe 2020 strategy as well. All these government's efforts will improve the quality of the government, open up the economy and the society, facilitate its integration into the EU, EU market and society and into the digital world. I wish all of us good luck in achieving all these objectives. Thank you very much.